Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. This is an edited version of an online session about control Lyapunov functions. We are going for the following exercise. Consider the following Lorentzian system x1 dot equal to minus x2 and x2 dot equal to x1 plus x2 times u. And the candidate Lyapunov function v1 of x equal to one half x1 squared plus one half x2 squared. The first question, design a nonlinear feedback controller that achieves the global stability of the origin. The second question, using Lassalle's theorem, is the origin globally asymptotic stable under the proposed controller? So this is the first part. The second part of the exercise, consider the following function, v2 of x equal to x1 squared minus x1 times x2 plus x2 squared. Is it a candidate Lyapunov function? Is it a control Lyapunov function? Propose a nonlinear feedback controller using syntax formula. And the last question, compare the two controllers. Let us move to the solution of this exercise. Consider the following nonlinear system where x1 dot equal to minus x2 and x2 dot equal to x1 plus x2 times u. And the candidate upon of action, v1 of x equal to half of x1 squared plus half of x2 squared. The first question is to design a nonlinear controller. So, using this candidate Lyapunov function, we would like to propose a nonlinear feedback controller that achieves the global stability of the system. So, this corresponds to the derivative of the candidate Lyapunov function it has to be less or equal than zero for all x in R2. Let us start by computing the derivative of the candidate Lyapunov function, which is equal to x1 times x1 dot plus x2 times x2 dot. Substituting the system dynamics in this expression, we get uh, x1 minus x1 times x2, which cancels x1, x2, plus x2 squared times u. So v dot of x is equal to x2 squared times u. So what is the expression of u that makes v dot of x less or equal than zero for all x in R2, which corresponds to the global stability of the system? The first proposition that you may suggest is to choose u equal to minus 1. And indeed, v dot of x is equal to minus x2 squared, which achieves the global stability of the system. However, the question asks for a nonlinear feedback controller. A feedback, we mean by that, that u depends on, on x and not a constant. So, one of the propositions is to choose u equal to minus x2 squared implies that the derivative of the Lyapunov function is equal to minus x2 to the power of 4, which is less or equal than 0 for all x in R2. u equal to minus x2 squared is a nonlinear feedback controller, which achieves the global stability of the system according to the Lyapunov's theorem. Let us move to the next question. Using Lassalle's theorem, is the origin globally asymptotic stable under the proposed control? So in this question, we would like to extend the previous results about the global stability of the origin to the global asymptotic stability. Lassalle's theorem, let omega be a compact set with the property that every solution of the system starting in omega remains in omega for all future time. In our case, the set omega corresponds to the region where v dot of x is less or equal than zero. Hence, omega is equal to R2. Next, we need to identify the set E, which corresponds to the set of points where v dot of x is equal to zero. So, in our case, v dot of x is equal to minus x2 to the power of 4, equal to 0 implies that x2 is equal to 0. Hence, the set E corresponds to uh, the x1 axis. In the phase plane x2, x1, omega is equal to r2, where v dot of x is less or equal than 0. The set E corresponds to v dot of x equal to 0, which corresponds to the x1 axis. This means x2 equal to 0.
The next step is to find M, which corresponds to the largest invariant set in E. We are looking, we are looking for M, the largest invariant set with respect to the system dynamics in E. So in the region E we have x2 is equal to 0. Substituting x2 equal to 0 in the system dynamics, x dot equal to f x1 x2 yields to x1 dot equal to 0 as x2 is equal to 0. This means that x1 is constant. So the next dynamic of x2, x2 dot is equal to 0, which is equal to x1. Hence, x1 is constant and is equal to 0. This means that the largest invariant set in E corresponds to the origin. It's only one point. So based on Lassalle's theorem, for any initial condition starting everywhere in the phase plane x2, x1, converge to this largest invariant set, which means that it converges to the origin. Hence, the origin is globally asymptotic stable according to Lassalle's theorem. Let us move to the next question. Consider the following function, v2 of x equal to x1 squared minus x1 times x2 plus x2 squared. Is it a candidate Lyapunov function? We have the function v of x or v2 of x equal to x1 squared minus x1 times x2 plus x2 squared. So to prove that v of x is a candidate Lyapunov function, we have to check the following two conditions. The first one, v of 0 is equal to 0, and v of x is strictly greater than 0 for all x in d minus 0. The first condition can be verified by substituting 0 in the function v of x. So we get v of 0 equal to 0. The second condition, v of x is strictly greater than 0, corresponds to proving v of x is a positive definite function. So the function v of x, in fact, is a quadratic uh, function, which can be written as x transpose times p times x. So a quadratic function is uh, strictly greater than 0, corresponds to proving that the matrix p is strictly greater than 0. So this can be proven using two methods. The first one, we have we need to prove that all the eigenvalues of p are uh, positive. The second method is to prove that all the leading principal minors are positive. So the matrix P in our case is a two by two uh, matrix, and the leading principal minors corresponds to P11 and the determinant of the matrix. So the leading principal minors have to be positive. Okay, let's write uh, v of x in the quadratic form. So v of x is equal to x1 squared minus x1 times x2 plus x2 squared. So we have x transpose times p times x. So x is x1, x2. So the matrix p, as we said, is 2 by 2 matrix. We have p11 corresponds to the coefficient of x1 squared. p22 corresponds to the coefficient of x2 squared, p12, and p21 corresponds to the coefficient of x1 times x2. And as the matrix P is symmetric, we have p12 equal to p21. So from the expression of V of x, we have the coefficient of x1 squared is 1, the coefficient of x2 squared is 1, and the only diagonal elements are minus 1 half and minus 1 half. The first leading principal minor, P11, is equal to 1, which is positive. The second leading principal minor is equal to um, P11 times P22 minus P12 times P21, which is equal to 1 times 1 minus um, 1 half times 1 half, which is equal to 3 fourths, which is uh, strictly positive. This implies that the function v of x is positive definite. Hence, the function v of x is a candidate Lyapunov function as it verifies the two conditions. v of 0 is equal to 0 and v of x is strictly greater than 0. Therefore, v of x can be used to check the stability of the system. The second method to prove that v of x is positive definite is to check that all the eigenvalues of p are 
positive or strictly greater than zero. So uh, let's compute the characteristic polynomial, which is equal to the determinant of lambda times i minus a, which is equal to lambda minus one squared minus one fourth. So the eigenvalues of the matrix P corresponds to the roots of the characteristic polynomial. Hence, solving the equation P A of lambda is equal to zero yields to lambda one equal to three by two and lambda two equal to one half, where both eigenvalues are strictly greater than zero. Hence, V of X is a candidate Lyapunov function. The fourth question is V of X uh, CLF. CLF stands for Control Lyapunov Function. So V of X is a CLF or Control Lyapunov Function means that this function can be used to stabilize the system. We have V dot of X equal to the partial derivative of V with respect to X times F of X plus the partial derivative of V with respect to X times G of X times U. V of X is CLF if the lead derivative of G with respect to X is equal to zero implies the lead derivative of F with respect to X is strictly less than zero. The lead derivative of V with respect to F corresponds to the partial derivative of V with respect to X times F of X. The lead derivative of V with respect to G equal to the partial derivative of V with respect to x times g of x. So let's start by v of x, which is equal to x1 squared plus x2 squared minus x1 times x2. So the partial derivative of v with respect to x1 is equal to 2x1 minus x2. The partial derivative of v with respect to x2 is equal to 2x1 2x2 minus x1. The system can be written as follows x dot equal to f of x plus g of x times u. The original system is x1 dot equal to minus x2 and x2 dot equal to x1 plus x2 times u. So from these equations, we get f of x and g of x. So f of x equal to minus x2 and x1. g of x is equal to 0 and x2. The lead derivative of v with respect to g is equal to the partial derivative of v with respect to x1 partial derivative of v with respect to x2 times g of x which is 0 and x2 so the partial or the lead derivative of v with respect to g simplifies to the partial derivative of v with respect to x2 times x2 implies the lead derivative of v with respect to g equal to 2 times x2 squared minus x1 times x2 X2. The lead derivative of v of x with respect to f is equal to the partial derivative of v with respect to x times f of x, which is equal to the partial derivative of v with respect to x1, which is equal to 2 times x1 minus x2, and the partial derivative of v with respect to x2 equal to 2x2 minus x1 times f of x, which is minus x2 x1. So, simplifying this expression, we get 2 times x1 x2 minus x2 squared plus 2 x2 times x1 minus x1 squared. So, uh, yeah, in fact, it's minus 2 x1 x2 plus x2 squared. So, cancelling the two terms, minus 2 x1 x2 and 2 x2 x1, we get LF V of x equal to x2 squared minus x1 squared. On the other hand, we have LGV of x equal to 2x2 squared minus x1, x2. To prove v of x is a CLF, firstly we need to solve the equation LGV of x equal to 0. This implies that 2x2 minus x1 times x2 equal to 0, and we distinguish two solutions. The first one is x2 equal to 0, or 2 times x2 equal to x1. Substituting these solutions in lf v of x we need to prove it or we need to find it strictly less than zero so starting by the first solution x2 equal to zero evaluating x2 equal to zero in lf v of x we find it equal to minus x1 squared which is strictly less than zero with the same manner for the second solution which is 2x2 equal to x1 or x2 equal to one half x1 
substituting uh, this solution in lf v of x we find it equal to x2 squared minus 4 x2 squared which is equal to minus 3 x2 uh, squared which is strictly less than 0 for LGV of x equal to 0 implies LF V of x is strictly less than 0. Therefore, V of x equal to x1 squared plus x2 squared minus 2 x1 x2 is a control Lyapunov function. This means that this function can be used to design a controller that achieves the global asymptotic stability of the system. The last question in this exercise is to propose a control law using Sontag's formula. So as a reminder, we have the derivative of the function v of x is equal to lf v of x plus lgv of x times u. So we distinguish two cases. The first one, when lgv of x is equal to 0, the control is cancelled from the expression of v dot of x. So we will choose it equal to 0. In the case when lgv of x is different than 0, we choose u such that v dot of x is strictly less than 0 for all x in R2 in this case. Sontag's formula is given by this expression, where u is equal to 0 if LGV of x is equal to 0 and equal to minus LF v of x minus square root of LF v of x squared plus LGV of x to the power 4, all divided by LGV of x, of course, if LGV of x is not equal to 0. In the first case, we have v dot of x equal to lf v of x, which is proven strictly less than 0. In the second case, v dot of x is equal to minus square root of lf v of x squared plus lg v of x to the power 4. So, in our example, u is equal to 0 if lg v of x equal to 0 and equal to x1 squared minus x2 squared, which corresponds to minus lf v of x, minus square root of the quantity x2 squared minus x1 squared squared plus the quantity uh, lgv of x to the power 4 all divided by lgv of x if lg of x is not equal to 0 so under this controller the system x dot f equal to f x u is globally asymptotic stable according to Lyapunov's theorem so this, sec this is the second controller, and if you remember, the first controller was u equal uh, to minus x2 squared. And our system in this case is x1 dot equal to minus x2 and x2 dot equal to x1 plus x2 times u. So if we compare these two controllers, the first one is simple and the second one is complex. The second controller achieves the global asymptotic stability as well as the first controller also achieves the global asymptotic stability. For the second controller, we proved that or we designed the controller using CLF, control Lyapunov function, and the second controller, we designed it or we proved the global asymptotic stability of this controller using Lassalle's theorem. The first controller requires the measurement only of x2 and the second controller requires both states, x1 and x2. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.